Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Hi, and welcome to Postscript. My name is Justin Teague. I am the worship and communications pastor at FaithBridge, and I'm here with Pastor Ken, who just finished part two of the Path to Purpose series called The High Price of a Little Lie. Thanks for being here, Pastor Ken. Sure. We've got two questions that have come in uh, since you just finished preaching, and the first one is about something you mentioned in the sermon. Can you explain uh, uh, how it is okay that Abraham could be married to his half-sister? <laughs> yes, because that ain't okay. <laughs> not today, it's not. Yeah, I think what, one of the things we have to remember is, uh, particularly in the early chapters of the Bible, uh, chapters 1 through 11, we're getting a, a, a sweep of history um, with indefinite dates uh, assigned to them. And then things begin to slow down in chapter 12 when we can identify, okay, Abraham, that was 4,000 years ago, and we can start to sort of chronicle out from there what was going on um, in biblical history. Through those earliest chapters that sweep through history and through uh, Abraham's life and in some other situations, we're going to see uh, some marital relations that just don't compute. Uh, let's just say when, when you're starting with fewer people, I, I guess in God's great plan, that was how they were able to do that and it was going to work. I think the more important uh, message is not to get hung up on the literality of it or the detail of it, which in today's world would not compute and it just that just isn't going to work. And let's get to the main thing. The, the point is the author is trying to tell us. In chapter 12, God says, I'm starting over with you, Abram, and you're going to be my man, and you're going to have people, and um, here it comes. And, and Abram responded in faith, and that's really what we're mm. trying to drive at. Um, as we work our way through these chapters in Genesis. That's good. So the next question actually has to do with faith yeah. and trusting. And uh, the question is, when does common sense come into play? God isn't telling me every little thing to do like a puppet. How do I know when I'm supposed to take over versus surrender? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we, we could say, well, he was just using his good common sense when he went to Egypt. He was trying to solve the problem. Um, I think, though, that there were several things, uh, one or two, that I tried to mention. He never did consult God, mm. at least not recorded. We don't have any evidence that he were uh, consulted uh, God. And we do realize, okay, you are responding in fear. This was all a fear-driven um, series of events. And we don't tend to respond wisely when we're responding fearfully or impulsively. Now, we have some great advantages or benefits today that Abram didn't have. I tried to mention those in the message last week. Uh, what do we have? Well, we have the Bible, for starters. He didn't have a Bible to turn to. And he just met God. And there weren't a lot of people meeting God back. I mean, we're kind of starting, you know, the, the story. Mm -hmm. We have the Bible. We have friends who also know God, who have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. The power of drawing near to a brother or a sister or two or three who not just are going to tell you what you want to hear, but really are going to try to discern and pray and go, they're going to search God's word with you. Mm -hmm. So we have these advantages. We've got the Bible. We've got community. And the, the presence of the Holy Spirit, which, which Abram did have, it was, they were just, he was just getting used to what's it feel like to follow God. And so that's why I was, tried to say towards the end, we had to give him a little grace. He was new at this. Um, I think, though, uh, that's what I would say, uh, because we do have to use our common sense, and we don't get sort of these face-to-face, -face, uh, earth-shaking encounters typically with God as 
he was doing back there at the beginning. But we do have all of these tools, and so we lean into those. That, along with our wisdom, gives us the courage to say, okay, this seems to be where God is leading us forward now. That's good. You know, one of the tools you mentioned, uh, the biggest one you mentioned as an action step, was the Kairos Conference. Yeah. Which part of the theme is moving in faith rather than in fear. Yeah. Uh, earlier this week, you and I were talking about how there uh, has sometimes been a misconception about the Kairos Conference, that it's more of an emergency room for the worst sure. of the worst. Sure. And you were saying, it, now this is more no. of kind of what the video was saying. About maintenance. maintenance. Yeah. This is a good thing for anybody, whether you're new in the faith, whether you're an old seasoned Christian. But, you know, we pick up these things in life from the hurts that have happened to us, the wounds that we've picked up in our soul. And these things can form a callous uh, ness in our soul that, that sort of is a, sort of, that blocks the grace that God wants to. And there's nothing like an opportunity to come and just to, to let God search our hearts and open us up so that there's a, a free flowing river of grace uh, from him to us. Um, by taking a look at, well, where are some places that maybe I have picked up some things or some ripples that came from mom or dad or grandparents. And I need to learn how to just sort of step out of that, step into freedom. That's great. That's going to be good. That's coming up. September uh, 21, 22, isn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. That's right. Yeah. Well, looking forward to part three. I know uh, that's coming up. Yeah. And uh, thanks for being with us today, Pastor Ken. Thank you for being with us for Postscript. We will see you next week. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org postscript.